right, so now we're gonna do something with this roof. So I've obviously got to put those edges back on for the drip gutters, but we're also facing a few dents that we couldn't get to on the car because there was a double panel. So I'm gonna flip it upside down in a minute and just try and work those out. And what I've done now is I've got it sitting on the table here, but I've put a bit of foam underneath just to try and protect the shape a bit. And I was just having a bit of a dabble on a couple of the machines we've got to try and create um, this shape here so that we can actually make a few pieces. Now, some people would probably replace that whole edge. I don't have that skill. So I'm going to go along where I've got some pinholes and things. I'm probably just going to put a piece in. And some of those, as I go, and I'll show you, I may even just put a copper block behind and weld them up with a MIG. Um, because that's just the way I do it. So I'm going to flip it upside down. I'm just trying to clean it all up, get some shape back into it. So we'll have a go at these dents and um, show you how we can maybe get that done. All right, we'll just flip that over. So this dent here, what I found with dents, and I'm no expert because I never did a trade in it, but I've always found if you can work out where the dent went in, I reckon this would have been a branch or something that's fallen down on it when it was sitting under the tree. If you can push the dent back in the same direction that it was made, then you've got a pretty good chance of getting it out without too much stretching of the metal, because that's the issue here is a dent like that one. It's obviously been put in with a couple of hits, so I'm going to try and use that shape there. And I'm going to use a sand-filled bag or a shop filled bag on the back of it. But I'm pretty happy with the quality of the inside there. A little bit of bleed through there. And you can see there when it was put together it was bare metal and where it's had those pads sitting on there's a bit of surface rust. Other than that, it's pretty good. Right, so leather bag full of, um, sometimes there's sand. I think this one's actual steel shot. So I'm just going to hold that under there with my leg and that's just to support it. And I'm going to put this, so this bolster, um, it's like for brickwork. I've ground that down to a nice rounded edge. So I don't know if you can come in on that a bit, please. All right, so it's just like a nice round edge. And I'm going to sit that in this crease and try and get that crease back out. It's quite solid. say get a bigger hammer. So now that that's starting to go a little bit I might just try and move a bit of this metal down through here. Now I'm trying not to do too much damage. So I'll just grab myself a soft rubber mallet. So this is where a little bit more experience is good because if you've done this all your life, um, then you've got a better idea what you're doing than I have because I don't do it, haven't done it all my life, I just do it on my own cars. Just try and take a bit of tension out of there. Quite strong through that rib. this hammer because of how wide the radius is so it limits the amount of dents 
and stuff I'm putting in it because I'm trying not to put any in it. It's not too bad there at the moment. Might go to a harder dolly on the back now. Just take that crease out. But that's come a fair way. So I'm just going to a hammer and a steel dolly now. See now, getting this shape back in, and I just feel that's a little bit high there still where that crease was. But I'm thinking that I'm gonna just put a little bit more back in here, and then I might flip it over. So I've got a crease in here as well to get rid of. That's getting close. I'm just gonna put that drift back in the back here and try and get that shape a bit. I'm gonna flip it over and see what I got on the outside and work from there. All right, so I flipped it over, obviously. And what I'm gonna do now, just run a flat file. So this is a, a lathe file, a fine lathe file. Bring the camera in close. You can see now we've got our high and then a low through here and it's pretty good up the top. So I'm just gonna now get probably the, the slapper actually and put a, a curved dolly in the back. Just try and knock this down, bring these up and see what I got from there. But that's come out pretty good because I knew it had gone in there. I need to get it out from there to get it all back up. Righto, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put a dolly in from the back. So I've picked one that pretty much is the same shape as the underside. And then what I'm using here is a slapper bar. Now that's just a bit of good quality mild steel that's been shaped. It's sort of the weight I like. And you've got to maintain it a little bit because it's not spring steel. A lot of people use spring. This was just all I had at the time I was making it. So I'm just going to try and work the panel around a bit. Now the motion there is to try and, I guess, flick it a bit. I'm trying to push this down and pull these up at the same time. And part of that's because I've got the weight of the dolly on the back. So by pushing up on the dolly and knocking down, I'm trying to level it out. So run that file back over. can actually see, I don't know if the, what the reflection's like there, Steve, for you. If you come around this side, probably. You can see here, these are my highs. This is pretty flat to there and flat to there, so I need to bring this up. And it's a bit low in here, which I can pretty much bring up with the back of the dolly, I reckon. Just by rubbing it. starting to touch there, a little bit there. So I just need to get this bit up and I can work my way around the corner. Right, so I'm having a bit of trouble getting this up. So what I've got now is a nice little dolly. I'm gonna use that like a hammer on the underside to knock this up against a flat dolly. The 
starting to come. So you can hear the change in there. When I'm out here, you can hear it ting ting. When I get in the middle, it's like tonk, and then ting ting. So I'm just trying to get this middle up. Okay, so it's getting close now. So if we get my dolly back the other way around and get my slapper on there again so you can see those bits shiny bits coming up so I'll go back with the curve one this way around Now once I get this relatively flat, the issue could be with such a crease, it might have stretched the metal and it might actually want to have a little hump. If it has that, then we'll need to heat shrink that to pull it back down again. If you're doing this sort of work, having the right tools makes all the difference. So what I'm using here now is a, a Merca. That's it up there in the box, so it's a, I can't even pronounce that, but the old agro I call it. Um, really good bit of kit. I mean, it's got variable speed, and it is a grinder. It goes very fast um, if you crank it up. And it comes with Scotch-Brite, all your different grits, and your sandpaper, and then it has flapper discs as well. So when you're in these small areas and you've got little ridges and things that you're trying to work with, it's very visible, you can see what you're doing. The fact that it's battery, it won't grab, because when it grabs, it actually just locks out the battery. So, really good tool. Um, I'm loving using it, and I'd be worth having a look. So you can see there now where the crease was, the low through the middle, and those lows are getting far less. But now I just need to come out here Chase some of these out, it's a bit low through here and up through here, so I'll do that next. And then I can see now I've got a big high here and a low there, so I need to push this out and get that back down. But that probably been stretched a bit, so we'll see how we go. So I've got an actual dent in the face of this flat edge here where it's got the crease in it. So I'm going to use this one now. Once again, it's just a bit of, I don't know, 10mm by the look of it, with the face all ground down. So I'm just going to put that in from the back, give that a bit of a... Try and keep it nice and flat. Not hit my finger. That's actually done a little bit. Doesn't sound like much, but it's come a bit. Flat dolly. Because I can move it, I might even turn it back up the other way and try and get these two edges of this ridge right, I think. Trusty sandbag in the back. That allows the panel to move. A bit high through here. Now I find something like that a lot easier to manage than trying to swing a hammer. 
If you swing a hammer, you end up with a whole lot of dents from the hammer, then you've got to fix the dents. Whereas with this, I can run that down. And if you're careful enough, you can maintain a nice piece of metal without filling it up with little dents from the hammer. Okay, so now I've got this ridge out better. I'm going to try and bring this face. I've got a dent here. I want to bring it back out and try and get this fat face going again. That's feeling pretty good. Still got a ridge through here. Just keeping pressure on the underside of that so I don't end up with a big belly in it. Now I'm not sure if you'll see this on camera but I like to use like a straight edge. So right on that ridge only about a mil down, and then there, right off the ridge is probably two mil, but the rest of it's looking pretty good. And it's got quite a curve through here all the way along. So the bit of curvature I've got in there, I think's no worse than the rest of it. So the whole thing sort of goes like this. So what I've got there now, I can feel a little bit of a high in it but I'll just slap that around a bit more and push these bottom bits up. I mean, you could probably get away with bogging it as it is. And I think that there's a lesson to be learnt there. Work out where the dent come from, what direction. Try and push it back out the same direction that went in. Right, so I've got this little rusty area here. So we've cut the lip off when we took the drip gutter off. So I've got to add that across the back. But before I can do that, I've done the dent. And now I'm just gonna do this corner. It's a little bit hard to try and show you the whole process, but pretty much what I've done is I made myself a little cardboard piece to work out what size I needed. So that went around there like that. I cut that out of some body steel. Now, body steel, you need um, 0.96 cold rolled steel. So it is classed as body steel and being cold rolled, it's softer than if you were to buy a zinc coated or if it's got that sort of flash on it, the bluey stuff on the outside, um, where it's hot rolled, the tensile strength is higher, so it's harder to work. So you really want the cold rolled. Um, you buy it in a 2400 by 1200 sheet. Uh, I normally go to my guy and get him to cut it up that'll fit into my little machine. Um, I need some pieces to do the sides of the roof. So I actually got a sheet cut the other day where I've got the two pieces to do my side windows, and then I've got the, um, some 20 mil strips cut to make those drip gutter edges, and then the balance of the sheet I'll use to make bits and pieces out of. So that's the steel. And then I've just used a couple of tools, mostly hand tools, to shape that. Um, and I've got this little stand down here, which is really good, this one over here that we made a long time ago. It's got a piece of solid plate, you know, like about 30 mil. But I've used things like this little thing we made here a long time ago as well. If I want to put something in there, I can put it in and just use a chisel, you know, with a rounded end or on a piece of wood, 
to actually put it on there and, and put those little radiuses and things in. But it really is a case of just forcing it along and then on this one here I've had it on the dolly on there just shaping the edge and then to get the shape correct um, this machine what the class is shrinker stretcher one side stretches the other side shrinks if I want to change this curve I can actually stretch the outside and it'll make this tighter or I shrink the outside of the panel as you can see I've been doing there to actually change the shape so that once I've sort of put all those edges and things in, I can put it on here and make sure it's the correct shape to what came off. So what I've done now is just run a bit of texture colour around there with my Sharpie and I've clamped that on and I've run around now with a scribe and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that out and sand it back exactly to that line so this piece should fit in and it'll be a neat fit and I can then TIG weld it in. So I've just matched up that little step there. And as you can see on the other side here, that step fades out fairly quickly about in this area. So that's what I've tried to copy. So it's obviously the reverse of that one. So it'll go on the other side. So I'll cut that up, tack it in, and then we'll TIG it up. While I'm um, messing around with the roof, I've just had Steve doing a little bit on this between other things we're doing, but I'm trying to do this car the same way that someone might do one at home. And I opted at this point not to go out to sandblast. Now, it's probably more time consuming to do it at home, but more cost effective if you're not paying for labour. So you can see in that door jam there, that had been paint stripped some, paint stripped some time ago. And we hadn't done the sills, so we're just stripping the sills off. And there's quite a lot of sort of surface rust from where it's, you know, had chips and things in it and then, you know, sat for a long time. So the lines in it is where we've deoxidined it up here and it's just ran down the face. So you can see how that eats away the surface rust. But because it's quite deep, because of the stone chips, I've decided just to use a, um, strip disc, so a black Flexivit strip disc um, and we'll just run that along there then we'll deoxidine it and I'm looking to get these jams and stuff into some primer, some epoxyurethane so that we don't have to keep cleaning it but at this point in time I'm just trying to get everything cleaned up so we can sort of work forward with a nice clean shell. So that part that I made up yesterday I've got it tacked in there now I'm just working my way across this back edge. So there wasn't much of the edge left on it. And what I've been able to do is clean that up. And then I've put my straight piece of 20 mil body steel across there. Once I get that welded in, I'll actually trim it back to the width that I require, which is only about 10 mil. But by using the wider strip, it's going to stop it warping with the heat because if I used a narrow piece, it would tend to want to move a fair bit. So I'm just about to weld that, and I've just made myself up a few pieces of 1.2 um, low tensile MIG wire, rather than a 1.6, because I wanna, don't want to have this sort of heavy build on here, because I've only got to grind it back off again. Right, so not the prettiest bit of TIG welding, but there was a lot of holes on the edge from drilling out the spot world, so I just had to fill those up as I went. But all in all, happy with the result. So now when I flip it over, I'll be able to weld this corner in. So I've just run down that bit there, so I can grind all that up now. So I'll just use a um, 40 grit flapper, nice new one, run along, square it up, and then um, flip it over and clean the other side up. Right, so I need to trim the back off of this. And I just was doing this, I thought, look, I'll film that anyhow. So I grabbed a little bit of scrap, a bit of one mil, and I've drilled a little hole in it. And I've done that so that I can sit that in that groove and run it along with my scribe. So I was looking for nine mil, so I've drilled that. I'll hold my scribe against the back edge and run it along and you can see there that's just a bit of black texture colour 
and then my scribes now run my line along there and that just gives me a nice line to run my one mil blade along and cut that off so I can clean it up and that'll be ready to go on when the gutters turn up. Got a couple of little holes here that don't warrant really cutting a piece out. So I've got a piece of copper that's about three mil thick, four mil thick, just clamped up on the underside and I'll just use the MIG now and I'll just fill up the hole and then grind it back. That'll save me having to have to modify that at all. And then this one up here, I've got to clean that up a bit and see what I've got to do there, whether I'm going to put a piece in there or I might get away with just migging up a couple of holes. Righto, so that'll take care of most of those. So I'll clean it up. Obviously put my torch on the back, make sure I've got no pinholes. But that's um, looking pretty good. Righto, so I've ground that up, come up pretty nice. When I turn it over, I'll actually do the other side as well. I'll grind the inside. Um, and then I got a bit carried away and started doing the side and I was on my own, so I don't have a lot of footage of that. But I'm going to show you, I mentioned before when I did the back, that I'm using, this is just the 0.96 cold rolled. Um, it's nice, soft um, steel to work with, very easy to bend, makes it easy to work. And I'm using 20 mil on the side, even though I only need like eight or nine, because if I use that, it'll hold it straighter as I weld it on. Now, the panel actually curves in on this end. And I'll just show you on the shrinker stretcher, I'm gonna shrink the inside edge. So this is straight, so you can see there just how much that curves in. And I'll just show you how quickly that works. Now, if you don't have, you know, a shrinker stretcher, I guess you could cut it out of a piece of flat sheet, or if need be, you could hammer this outside edge, and by hammering it, you'll make it thinner, which will bend it. We might even try that on the, on the amble, but the shrinker stretcher is what I use. So it's got, there's two sets of jaws, this one's the shrink, the other one's the stretch. And when you put the metal in there, it grabs the metal and pulls it or stretches it. So this being straight, if I put this in here now, just on the, on the outside edge, and when I push down on that, those jaws, you can see the little marks there, grab hold of it and pull the metal. Now if I work my way along, and it is a little bit of a, like everything, a little bit of a learning process, how much to do and how far in to have it. But you can just go along there with the very lightest amount of pressure. And that will bend. You should be able to see the curve in that. So the idea is, is to follow the shape of the panel. You can move this over next to the panel and, and work it to get it to do it. The other really cool thing about it is, is if it's got a bend coming up on the side, you can shrink this and it will actually turn the whole bend around as well. So I'm sure we'll do that somewhere along the line. So back to the job at hand. Um, I've made that strip up, tacked it on. I'll make sure it's straight. I put a, a level on it this morning to make sure I haven't sort of put any curves in it. And now I want to TIG that all the way along and grind it up the same as I did on the back surface. So just a matter of um, putting my head down now and do a bit of welding. Right, so that's pretty much going to make up this episode because I'm doing this when I can between all the other things I'm doing. One of the things I just did do, which was really cool, is I went up to the races up at Windsor again for the blown boats. And if you're into anything automotive, go and have a look at that show. It was the last one we put up. Um, unbelievable what those guys are doing on the water. From the van, um, I'll just keep tinkering away. Um, I'm looking to pull some deals together and got some real good plans. I'm going to get a drawing done of it and as soon as I've got that I'll get it out to you. But you're basically, what you're seeing is what I'm doing and because it's my own it's what I can fit in in between. So I hope you enjoyed this one and we'll continue to bring them as we do the work and keep you up to date on where the van's at.